All right. So we're here with the E6. Hi. Hello. So please introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Kinsen Chen. Uh, I'm the co-founder of uh, E6. Now he's uh, doing the CEO. All right. Okay. And and um, this device, I saw it at the other booth over there. It's so many antennas. What's happened? Yeah, actually, this is a, a dual 4G uh, modem uh, router. So, so many antennas because we want them to be more stable because it's for industrial purpose. So yeah. where do you put the the dual 4G? There's two and there's two modems in there. Yeah, that's the inside here. Yeah. Two yeah. SIM cards. So SIM card and two modems inside. Uh, and so it could be like three antennas for one, three for the other, or something uh, like that. Uh, uh, no, this uh, will be have a two for one, and two for one, and another two is for Wi-Fi. All right. Yeah. And you bond. It's bonding. Yeah, it's bonding. Yeah. Why we need to have a two for G? Uh, the two purpose. The first one purpose is uh, because of bonding. Uh, we want sometimes they need speed. So the 4G is widely available in the world. They can use the 4G to bonding at the speed. Second is maybe redundancy, uh, because of some of the places they have a, one mobile operator, operator is very stable, another may be stable. They have a two operator work together, so uh, make it as a single line. It's like redundancy and uh, being a backup solution and seeing to get the optimal bandwidth all the time right. for 4G. Right, for 4G, right. And right. you can do even more. I saw that you had four in there, and the other one? Oh, yeah, we got some, uh, we deployed uh, some of them down for on the 5G. Uh, you know, 5G is uh, now starting available uh, in the world. For example, I'm in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, 90% of the carpets are by, by 5G. So we can use the 5G now. All right, uh, so which one? Yeah, this one. Okay. This one there. So there's a lot of antenna connectors right there. How many, how many modems? Yeah, this one is also two modems, two 5G modems. Uh, each 5G modem requires eight antenna, so you see a, to a lot of antenna here. Yeah. All right. Lots of antennas. These are the antenna ports. Right? And you put the two SIM cards in uh, somewhere in there? Yeah. Uh, for this one, it's very different from the previous one. This is called the power. Uh, it's a waterproof, IP67. Means that you can drop into water oh. uh, without damage. Of course, radio wave cannot work inside the water. Yeah. But also you can drop in water for a heavy rain, uh, powerful water on it. It's okay. Maybe it's on the boat. Yeah, it's on the boat. Yeah, sometimes the wave, big wave on it. It's okay. Yeah. It could be container ships. Yeah, container ships and um, regular boats, anything. Yeah. Uh, you see the where is the SIM card? SIM card is inside. <laughs> so you really need a screwdriver to open it and then I put the SIM card in and put it back. So in order to protect it from the water. Yeah. And uh, at the other booth over there, it seems there was four SIM cards or two is maximum you do? Yeah, actually this one you can put four SIM cards. Four? Yeah, yeah. but the two, is, uh, two are active. So another two you can switch? Are, in, yeah, in, in, yeah, another two will be uh, uh, called, uh, called standby. Standby. Yes. And uh, so, if the bad, if there's a bad signal on one of them, it can switch to another one to see if it's better. Yeah. He have been deployed in uh, top ten ports. Uh, three of them. We have one is in Tianjin, another in Shenzhen, another in Hong Kong. You know, in the port requirement is really high. Uh, for example, in Tianjin, in summer is uh, 40 degree, 50 degree, uh, but in winter minus 30 degree. We still need to continue working 24 hours a day. Because of whenever you miss some of these uh, this port, for example, miss 40, uh, 24 hours, then you lose 150,000 US dollars. So reliability is very important for that. So they can spend $150,000 on the modem instead? <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> oh, how, is it expensive? It's not very really expensive. That's why they love us very much, compared really? to the $150,000. Oh, really? right? Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right over there at your partner's booth, I saw if we can have a look here. Okay. Uh, is that a different model, or is it the same you showed me before? What is oh, this? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, this one we call Satellite Max. Uh, you, you see a lot of antenna. So it's the exact same as the power, but so it's not a waterproof. It's, it's four? Yes, uh, this four is for one 5G, another four for second 5G, and this is for Wi-Fi. Wow. Yeah, anything of them or make it duplicated. Uh, the purpose is because it's, it's industrial grade. We put in some uh, some kinds of like, uh, smart lamp posts and also in uh, a lot of factories. Uh, for example, in Toyota factory in Tianjin city. Also in a multi factory in China. Nice. What do we yeah. see in the, in the front? Just a bunch of Ethernet? Yeah, here a bunch of Ethernet. 
The Ethernet itself is what we call PoE. It could provide power. If some of the equipment they connect to it, they do not require external power. They just use it as a power and network. Wow, cool. And yeah. let's let's go back and check uh, at your booth. Um, there was some other device right here. Uh, what is this one there? Yeah. This one we call satellite ST2. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very really tiny one. It's a single modem. The main is a 5G modem too. There's a 5G antenna on here. Okay. Yeah. The main purpose is for this one is for lights. Uh, for for example, in some of the vehicles, uh, we call the V uh, uh, AGV. Uh, in Toyota factory, they put a lot of them on that. Instead of using the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi you know is noisy. Sometimes it's not unstable. Uh, but the for 5G is much more stable. They just put, put it on the uh, on the AGV and moving it controlled by the 5G. Wi-Fi was designed for micro ovens, right? Yeah. It's not really optimal for data. Well, right, Maybe. right. Yeah, it's it for regular for home use. It's okay, but yeah. so you for industrial use. Sometimes it's really dangerous. So you broken for a few seconds, and connect again, and you lose the control. And you lose hundred fifty thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> again. Yeah. And this is was this the same or? This is the same. This is the same. This is the same. All right. So this is also illustrating a little bit. So yeah. since when have your company do this kind of technology? Uh, I'm sorry. How long time you've been doing this te oh, technology? Oh, it's a long time. We we start our R and D in two thousand seventeen. All right. Yeah. So in the 2019, we deployed the first case in Tianjin port. So it's been very busy uh, the last three years during the corona, just growing business? Oh, it's a busy, the mainly busy on the R&D and the product development. Uh, actually, wherever we go into the port, our engineer cannot go out. So they are really busy inside. You know, it's because of COVID. So yeah. they, they brought the whole port. Anybody inside cannot go out. People outside cannot go in. So the engineer really lived there for three years? Uh, no, they live there for a few months, and then when you open, they still just go back home, take a wow. shower, and go back again. <laughs> it's been a very busy time. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, uh, how does it work? Because I, I really like the bonding technologies, yeah. uh, bonding network, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Uh, how stable is it? Because let's say uh, you have two, some, two networks, mm -hmm. one of them starts failing for some reason, mm -hmm. for sure the other one will not get confused, it will just continue overtake. Yeah. And it will be very, very stable to continue? Yeah, it's very really stable to continue. Think about it. When you use a fixed line, the fixed line drop, uh, broken, it's, still, it's gone. But when we use a two line, even four line, each line only 19.9%. Uh, oh, sorry, I said If each of the line is a 0.1% failure rate, and four line together, the failure rate is very, very slow, uh, low. Uh, this is what we do for that. Yeah. But you said there was two standby and two active. Yeah. Do you also have four active or you don't have four active We device? currently have uh, two standby, two active. But wherever there's one fail, the standby active one, they just swap each other. Instantly? Instantly. Yeah. This right. is pretty fast. And also, if you really want to have a four active, even eight active, we can use this one. We can use a cascade mode. Oh. So when they cascade together, this line connect to each other, and then they can have uh, eight. Maximum 16 of them. Cascade means uh, mm. load balancing and each Load balancing, they connect together, make it a single router. Or oh, 16. 16, yeah. But there's Wait. no space for 16. Put uh, it one more movie from. Ah, you just stack Six, them. Stack them together. Oh. Uh, custom means a stacking. Uh, All right. stack, or we can stack four of them together, uh, and, then, uh, and then another four, and then make it 16. Is there something about uh, interference from one modem to the other? How do you design interference-free design? You're very testing everything inside? Yeah, uh, interference is a problem on the, on the radio part, uh, but uh, we choose a really good brand name from America and one of the good factory here, and they make it uh, to avoid the interference. Uh, this is pretty good. Just like when we two together, sitting together, have a handset talking on the phone, we don't interfer interference with each other. Ah, we've got this technology already. So no, no issue? There's no okay. issue at all. Right. All right. Doesn't like Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi will have an issue, but 5G is OK. It works yeah. really well. How is the jump from 4G to 5G, in your opinion? Yeah. Uh, in terms of bandwidth and reliability, interference and everything? Yeah, there's uh, something uh, we can see. For example, bandwidth. The bandwidth is uh, 10 to 100 times. It depends on what the location. 
is much bigger. And another one is a really critical industrial is response time. The response time in, uh, in one, uh, 5G is much, much faster than 4G. That means, that means that you can have an instant control for all these kinds of facilities, machines, etc., even the cranes. How about the signal strength, the signal quality or the interference or, you know, like uh, that kind of stuff? Did it improve a lot with 5G or a similar problem like before? From the, from the signal strength, uh, the string itself is uh, the distance is uh, lower. However, the, there are a lot of the number of devices you can connect. So there's a call and back. Uh, but on 5G, because they have a special frequency called 700 megahertz, uh, on that kind of frequency, we test it in China uh, on the coast. It can have a, a length of 90 kilometers long. Wow. Oh, this is really incredible. When we test it, we also supply. We thought it's a 40 kilometer, but the customer told us 90 kilometer. It's all the way to Taiwan. Uh, not, yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet. Right. <laughs> not yet. All the way, it's a ship for a lot of uh, boats. They are close to the coast. For example, they are shipping around the coast, along the coast, within the 50 kilometer, 30 kilometer. It works well. You do not require satellite. You just wow. use the 5G. You save a lot of money and also increase a lot of bandwidth. What you just say, it makes Elon Musk nervous. Because you sell the satellite. Oh, exactly. <laughs> So don't but tell you, him. I'm joking. <laughs> but do you, uh, do you also work with the satellite connection yeah. somehow? When we work with the satellite, we will use the satellite as a backup network or some of the test message. Some important message you cannot lose, must now use a satellite. For a lot of video, camera, also photo message, they use it, use 5G. Could be Starlink? Yeah, could, can be. Be, could be Starlink too, of course. So you can yeah. connect the Starlink to there? Yeah, one of our customers doing the mobile operation, they talked to us, they want to try it with Starlink. So we give them the, some sample, they'll try it by themselves. Maybe they can have the Starlink when they're more than 90 kilometers out of the sea, oh, and when they, they come closer, it switched to 5G. Yeah, exactly. This is the way they want to do. They want to have a container ship uh, across the con continents. So they use Starlink and 5G combined together. That's uh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Think about uh, when the container ship, when uh, they're shipping from one country to another country, uh, during the shipping, there are lots of information they want to ship to, the, uh, to tell the destination port. Video, photos, different kind of message. If they use the satellite to send it out, it's called maybe 100 megabytes or 100, uh, maybe the gigabytes. It costs a lot of money for that. But when they are across or approaching the port, they can start to use the 5G to send out. We've been approaching the port, take them about two hours, one hour to really park it. That time, they don't waste. They use 5G. I, I think every boat should have this switch over from satellite to, to a 5G automatic system. And uh, uh, I think boats should have like, a, I don't know, a fishing boats, for example, should have some kind of technology with the cameras and everything yeah, to fish. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, as they approach the harbor, all the data is sent over, right, uh, right. but that's a different market maybe. Right, this, uh, this, uh, this is a really big market on that. It's called the marine time market. Uh, actually, we are trying to, to test it, and uh, also some of the boats are start to uh, install uh, for yet. As you mentioned, shipping boats, they try it. Right. Yeah. And you're based in uh, Hong Kong? Yeah, I'm based in Hong Kong. Uh, yeah. Also, we have a business in mainland China, Hong Kong, Southeast Asia, etc. In yeah. Europe, in USA? Oh, no, yeah. I hope want to find some of the partners in Europe and then we can work together to expand the business there. Because your technology is ready to export everywhere? Yeah, it's ready for everywhere. Oh, yeah. You already have customers around the world? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I can say in uh, Asia, not America, not Europe yet. Yeah. All right. What's your big competitor? Uh, we don't have a very solid competitor we found uh, for one big competitor. We, we got a lot of competitors for different sectors. For example, in ports, uh, we won Huawei. Huawei is our competitor. We won them several times. That's why uh, uh, Yangshan Port tried to find us again. Yeah. But in the commercial world, uh, for example, we sell to 7-Eleven. Uh, there are a lot of uh, home user router who will be our competitor. Nice. But there is not a single competitor can com can compete with us for the whole market. Uh, can you talk about what is a modem chipset that you use? Um, is it a... Uh, yeah, the how, modem how chipset we use is a Qualcomm chipset. Qualcomm. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's still the best. <laughs> so Qualcomm has all the solution for 4G and 5G. 
Yeah, they got the solution starting from 2G, up to now it's still 5G. Yeah? So they are still leading. Uh, we can see the performance very really well uh, on using that. So the whole set of our router, we use the Qualcomm. Because some countries have some kind of discussions about uh, what chipset they use, mm. and uh, maybe the Americans are pushing their solutions, mm. and uh, you know, maybe yeah, yeah. that opens up different markets. But uh, Qualcomm is uh, welcomed by all the world. All right, mm. cool. All right, thanks, thanks okay, a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>